All right, so let's see if we can figure out what happens to this e function as in one step we update the partitions and the other step we update the centers. So let's look at the partition one first. The way that this partition is being defined is we, for each point, loop over all the clusters and find the cluster whose center is closest to x in terms of squared distance. What happens to e when we do that? Well, we move a point from one cluster to a different cluster only if it causes the square distance of the center to go down. So that means that the error either stays the same if the point stays in the same cluster, or it goes down if it goes to a better cluster. That makes sense. So it can only go down. Well, it can never go up. That's different than saying it can only go down. Agreed, because it can stay the same. What happens if it stays the same? I guess not necessarily anything interesting. Right. But certainly when we've converged, it stays the same. Right. All right, now let's look on the other side here. So that's what happens when we move things into partitions. And in some sense, that seems easy because we only move things if it causes the error to go down. So it really is a lot like hill climbing. Mm -hmm. On this side, though, what happens when we move the centers? So could it be the case that when we move the center to some other place that the error goes up? No. And why do you say that? Because the average is going to be the best way to represent a set of points on average. We should be able to demonstrate that. I think we already have. We did this earlier in, in the course when we were talking about minimizing least squares. Ah, uh, you're right. So basically, you could take that equation and you could just take the derivative of it, set it equal to zero, and it'll turn out to be exactly the average. You're right. That's exactly right. The error equation E. That's right. Yeah. So this is like really kind of neat. When we move points around, we move it to reduce error. And we move centers around, we always move it to the center. Even though this is a continuous space, we always jump to the center that actually has minimum error under the assumption that we're holding the partition steady. Right. So this is just great. So put them together, you're guaranteed to be, let's see, what's, what's the math term? Monotonically non-increasing in error. Monotonically non-increasing in error. Very nice. Mm. And does that imply that the thing has to converge? Could we be monotonically not increasing in error forever? You could in some worlds, but not in this world. I think I could argue that. All right. So a monotonically not increasing function is a function that never gets bigger. So you could end up in a case where you hit some point, like say zero error, and you keep going. So why wouldn't that happen here? Here's the argument. You ready? Sure. There are a finite number of configurations. Mm. There have to be a finite number of configurations because there's a finite number of objects and there's a finite number of labels they can have. Mm -hmm. And once you've chosen a label for a bunch of the objects, the centers are defined deterministically from that. Right. So even though it's an infinite space, as we're tick-tocking back and forth, if we don't move the partitions, then the centers are going to be where they were. So the centers are quite constrained even though it's continuous. Right. So the only tricky part to that is that you could have a point that can go to either of, let's say, two partitions because the distance is the same. So you have to have some way of breaking ties such that you always get the same answer. For example, I will just say that if I, as a point, can go to any of two partitions, I will pick whichever one has the lowest number. Good idea. So breaking ties consistently, and you gave a particular rule for that, is going to guarantee that we at least don't kind of spin around not improving. Right. So let's see if what I just said makes sense. So tell me if you buy this. They have a finite number of configurations. If I always break ties consistently and I never go into a configuration with a higher error, then at some point, basically I will never repeat configurations. I'll never go back to a configuration I was at before. And at some point I have to run out of configurations because they're a finite exactly. number. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done. So it converges in finite time, no less. Finite time. Could it be exponential time? Because there is a lot of possible partitions. So how many different configurations are there? They're k to the n, because you can assign k to the first object, k to the second object, k to the third object. So k times k times k times k times k, all the way up to n, so that's k to the n. So that's a lot of possible configurations. But regardless, there's a finite number of them. And I suppose in practice, it's not like you would look at every single one of them, because you're going to jump around very quickly because of the way distance metrics works. If points are close together, they're always going to be close together. And so you're never going to try assigning each one to all possible configurations if they're close together. Yeah, it tends to converge pretty fast. So let's summarize some of these properties. Okay. 